So we are in the difficult spot because we are the last ones uh, between you and Lutch. So we'll try to be quick. Louder. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, quickly, sorry. Uh, we work for a small French consulting company and we do uh, open uh, stuff like open source, open data, open hardware in uh, uh, not technical uh, fields like uh, legal and uh, economical and so on. So, uh, what I'm going to do uh, today is to talk about uh, metrics and valuation of uh, open source uh, project and uh, its relation to uh, open science. So, uh, first, uh, a bit of uh, context. So, uh, what you might not be aware of is that uh, in France we have uh, strong incentives uh, to produce uh, open source, uh, first at a um, legal level. So uh, we have a, a law which is called uh, uh, La Loi Le Maire in 2016 that's basically centered on open data that says that uh, every data produced by uh, public uh, uh, in institutions should be made uh, uh, available. But it should be made available in a, um, under a format that, that is automatically uh, uh, consumable. That is, that if you ask, uh, I don't know, uh, for the list of something, they can't send you a PDF with a, a picture of a, of a spreadsheet. <laughs> they have to send you. I mean, that's what they did before. I mean, uh, we really had the case. Uh, so now, I mean, uh, by the law, they are forced to uh, send you proper formats like a CVS, a JSON, uh, and so on. And the other interesting aspect is that we talk about data, but actually uh, in the law it's documents. And so you have to understand also that uh, source code is uh, considered as a document. So now, I mean, when they produce software, they have to uh, uh, also uh, uh, publish so source code, uh, or at least if you request it, uh, under a real open source license. That means that they not only have to communicate it, communicate it to you, but they have to license it under a, a license, uh, which is an uh, uh, open source uh, definition compliant li license. So uh, that's one great point. Uh, like we have a, uh, open source and open data by default or by uh, out of principle. And another important part of this law is the publication part and the open science part, because one article was uh, dedicated to open access. I don't know if you are familiar with research today, but you have to pay uh, to access the publications that you write. That's why, because it's big publisher who, um, who have this article, and you have to pay for that. That's why in this law also there is an article about open, um, open access, and uh, the link between open source and open science is that uh, in the idealistic vision of science, it's also uh, community collaboration, transparency, and the open source community uh, are really inspired by this open science and this way of, uh, of doing science. And that's why there is a natural affinity between science and open source. And also the researchers are pushed to open their code and the code source. But a law is not enough because it's a lot of discourse and norms, but it's not the practice. That's why an important part is to think how to change the practice, and uh, we will get back to it uh, later, but today in science, the evaluation are really traditional with traditional metrics, and that's why it's important also uh, to get some evolution about that. So yeah, so first we mentioned the bright side of things, so the darker things, it's that, uh, uh, be it uh, and, uh, at a science level at a, or at a more economical level, we still have uh, old metrics and we, uh, I mean, uh, research institutes still have also economical constraints. So, uh, on one side, uh, I mean, they have to open everything, but on the other side, they say, oh yeah, but you have to produce uh, financial revenues uh, with your activity. So, uh, the problem is that, okay, but how do I justify that I produce value uh, with, uh, when I publish a project as an uh, open source? So, uh, to solve this, uh, we should realize, because that's a problem of the valuation of uh, open uh, digital assets. It's something we had uh, worked before on, but on more on the business side uh, of things. But, so, what we realized uh, was that you have to uh, take a global uh, approach uh, of value and can't you can't limit it to uh, 
uh, just financial uh, value. And uh, we quickly, quickly realized that, yeah, we had to uh, take advantage of what had been done in the rich search uh, field uh, about measuring the measure of, uh, of value, which is not uh, financial. So uh, generally, uh, the starting point, it's uh, what uh, the raison d'être of uh, the entity you are, you are studying. And so, because it's not a private company, I mean, the only goal is not to uh, produce uh, financial revenue. So y you have to consider, uh, according to the goal of the entity, what uh, is valuable. And the second point is, where is that value that you produce captured? Because, uh, I mean, it's very easy to realize that you are producing value, but the question of actually who captures it, uh, it's also key to, uh, to the decision that uh, you will take. So, um, we were uh, commissioned by the, the CNES, I don't know, I think you don't know, well, that's the French uh, space uh, agency. Uh, I think English speaking, say CNES. Uh, so, uh, they produce uh, a lot of open source software and um, they are very willing to uh, release uh, as much as they can uh, as open source. But uh, they have to justify uh, that uh, it's not uh, wasting public money. So they wanted to have a, a pragmatic methodology uh, to be able to uh, decide which project they will uh, publish at open source. And uh, wh once they have published it as open source, they want to be able to justify that they actually produced uh, a value uh, by taking this uh, decision. So uh, the current uh, framework that they work in is that they have um, an objective and performance contract uh, with the French state. And um, at the, the end of this contract, you have an uh, appendix uh, with a, a kind of uh, table like that. Uh, we just translated it with a performance indicator and targets. And you will see that, yeah, the, the metrics uh, are very uh, traditional to say the least, like typically the number of patents. Uh, I think all of you know that it's a very bad matrix because there's a kind of uh, automatic assimilation between uh, having a patent and being innovative. And we know that it's so much untrue. And uh, typically, I mean, in software, because in Europe, software is not supposed to be patentable uh, because of the business model of the European Patent Office, sometimes they ground patents that they shouldn't. And so if you want to reach your targets, I mean, it's very easy. I mean, you can just uh, have a, uh, as much patent as you want. It's just that it will cost you money. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that's a, a wrong indicator at, um, at many levels. But also it gives us an idea that if we want to have a, a better indicator, I mean, the level of quality of the indicator is not that high. So uh, it's worth trying. And so, the other the, um, type of hard metrics that's uh, about uh, salary mass, that's all uh, financial uh, constraints. But other metrics um, are about scientific production. And again, you can see that it's only about publication. The number of publications in the field of scientific research, but also they mention scientific recognition indicators, two, two year citation in index, because in science there is a lot of metrics, for example, the impact factor and uh, or the age index, and uh, everything is based on, uh, on publication to measure science, scientific production, and the excellence of science in a competi competitive context, because science is really competitive to, uh, to get some funding and so on. But what you can see is that the um, in the contract, uh, there is no, there are no targets. That's why the indica indicators were were free, and uh, there was some flexibility to adapt and also to create new indicators to measure uh, scientific uh, value. That's why uh, the idea of this study was also to um, to explore how we can add also um, value scientific value based on uh, open source software. So uh, the idea to measure the value pro uh, produced by uh, open source, uh, we distinguished, uh, well, uh, sorry, oops. Yeah, uh, so as, as I was mentioning before, the, the starting point was uh, to uh, be clear on the goals and the missions uh, of the CNES, and that boils down to three main uh, categories. 
and they have to uh, foster economical activities I mean, upstream and downstream. And so the main uh, consequence of that is that you'll have to measure your value not inside the institute uh, itself, but also outside of it. And uh, that's the same uh, for contributing uh, to uh, science and research uh, in space, because the usage of uh, your uh, software, I mean, you'll have to measure it also outside. And the last one, that's economical efficiency, which we mentioned uh, before. So. Um, we had four categories of uh, value that were quite specific to, uh, to open source. The first is that, well, we coined that term, we're not uh, really sure it's the best one, that was everything that is correlational to it, which means uh, that it's tightly linked to it, but you can't measure it. It's like uh, tran transparency, transparency uh, and uh, reproducibility for science. I mean, it's not something like uh, you can me measure, but it has a fundamental value. I mean, if you want to be able to make Reproducible science, I mean, the fact of uh, uh, having open source software is uh, necessary. Uh, the second main uh, category is usage value, that you realize that, yeah, I mean, your, uh, what you create, it takes value as it is used. So you'll have to uh, measure that also. Uh, the solar line's contribution value is that because it changes the workflows of um, value creation, that, okay, uh, if I start a project that is su successful, actually I, I will have uh, external contributions. So it's like I'm having people working for me or I've been working to help me reach my goals. And the last one, that's uh, scientific value, which is a category in itself. So for usage-related value, I mean, I won't detail too much because I mean, that's typically what is uh, treated here in uh, uh, ChaosCon. So uh, we have, um, problems to, to measure it, but that's uh, the usual things like delete downloads. We know it's a bad matrix because, I mean, it's not because someone uh, downloads your software that it uses it, but also you have a lot of proxy settings. Typically when you deploy your software in a large company, you will see one download and actually it's the internal company to, that will uh, deploy it to uh, 10,000 uh, of desktops. So w we know it's not perfect, but yeah, it's still uh, one of the elements you have to take into, uh, into account. The other one is telemetry. Telemetry is fine because you know that the person is actually using your software. But, well, that has uh, also drawbacks on the privacy uh, size. You can do surveys, and which is interesting because it gives you fine grain information, but still you have a representativity problem. And uh, uh, generally, uh, yeah, um, the fact of qualifying your users uh, is hard. That uh, you're interested in knowing uh, where they are based and uh, also, I mean, what kind of entities they are. If they are a commercial entity, if they are a uh, research uh, institute, and, and so on. So, uh, contribution value uh, for that's uh, so about the tooling, we just use the, what is classical tools. I mean, that's Grimoire Labs and Facade. I don't know if everyone knows Facade, it's uh, much simpler. Uh, and we had uh, classical problems, typically, I mean, attaching uh, individual contributions to entities. And there are many uh, things that had to be uh, done manually, uh, typically in the classification of entities, because you can attach it to a domain name, uh, fine, but uh, then uh, how, um, what uh, is uh, the domain name uh, attached to? I mean, is the SMB in Europe, outside Europe, etc.? One uh, interesting thing is that uh, because uh, the CNS is using its own software and it's also directly uh, capturing a part of the value of the contribution, so you have to take this into account also in your, in your model. Oops. And the last part is um, scientific uh, metrics. And um, for this today, uh, the idea would be to develop new metrics which are a project, open source project centered for, for researchers. For, because uh, today, researchers, when uh, they participate to open source projects, uh, it's not uh, part of their evaluation on, of, uh, for their research. And it's a, a big issue for researchers who want to uh, get a full uh, <coughs> a job uh, in research in academia, because they spend a lot of time uh, developing software and so on but it's not, uh, it's not part of the evaluation. 
That's why the idea will be to uh, have some articles about uh, a given software project. For example, in science today, now there is also a specific journal, the name is Data Science Journal, based on the fact that you share and you open your data. And the idea would be maybe to have some uh, software science journal about uh, when you publish or when you develop an um, uh, open source software. And also that you mention in your articles uh, the software and this, uh, that after this point uh, is uh, mentioned and evaluated in, in your research. And it's the uh, other part of uh, the software index. Yeah, you so explain. one problem is that you will have that you want to um, automate it. I mean, typically say, okay, I, I want to know which uh, research paper you use my software. You can do a plain text search in your database, but say, okay, you will have a lot of false positives. So, okay, I, I'd love to, to have a way to do that uh, automatically. Uh, so, to be able to do that, then you uh, well, you have to have uh, existing data first. So, you have to have a way um, to incitate a researcher to clearly uh, state the software they use. And we see that uh, actually it's a growing trend. And because the um, software themselves are asking for it uh, explicitly. Um, but the other problem is the automation. So uh, with data sets, you have now the use of DOI, that's a digital object uh, identifiers that can be used uh, for software, but it's not really a common uh, practice. Uh, there are uh, groups uh, like uh, Force 11, Force 11. Uh, who are working on it, but still, it's it's not uh, yet uh, a reality. But uh, the problem is that if we automate it, that will be well. well bring it to us. But an important part also uh, for I think for open source projects and uh, for all the research about metrics, it's to learn from the past and from uh, the history of evolution in research. Because uh, metrics in research, the first metrics based on journal and uh, articles started uh, in 1970s with the beginning of scientometry. And uh, the main goals at the beginning was to, uh, we will stop, to um, uh, Id identify journal to help researchers to find uh, information, pertinent information, and to get funding. But after, there was a lot of misuse of these metrics, and uh, in research uh, we call that uh, publish or perish. That, that means that the researcher just tried to use these metrics, but it became the objectives, and they are not thinking about what is to do uh, to, pract to um, produce good si better science, good science, but just to uh, answer to the metrics. That's why it's also the, um, the difficulty today. And uh, in research today, there is a lot of critics about this evolution. And uh, open science uh, is focused on uh, finding ways to practice, but also to question the balance between quantitative and qualitative evaluation that everything maybe can't be uh, quantified. And we will maybe stop there, but uh, it's the perspective <laughs> will give you that open science can uh, give you inspiration about your practice, but also open source project can help researchers. Uh, often projects are totally closed. That's why open source is a good way to inspire also researchers. Thank you.